Mayor and City Council members, can you hear me? My name is Leslie Pollard, as most of you know. <clears throat> I was a planning technician in the um, planning department and also the union chapter president for now SEIU, I mean, yeah, SEIU Local 1021. Um, gosh, I've been waiting on this moment. I'm sorry. Speak up, please, speak up. I'm trying. I think it's the amplifier. Is there, is, is the handheld mic better to use? Is that going to broadcast better? Is it? I am speak louder. That's me. I'm going to put my mouth on here. Can you hear me? Okay, then I'll use this one. Okay, <clears throat> I'll do my best. Um, it's good to be back for a minute at least. Um, as most of you know, um, back in oh, 2004, September 2004, I was taken off from work, escorted out of the building, and um, <clears throat> was um, not allowed to return until this year, January 16th, 2007. And what I'd like to say just briefly is um, that I've worked in Emeryville now, I had up until March 6th, for almost 30 years. June would be 30 years. And um, I worked at the Senior Center at the, um, for Redevelopment Agency as well as for planning, kind of worked my way up the ladder till I got to be a planning technician. Um, put a lot of years in this planning technician, worked extremely hard. I was pretty, I pretty much was raised here in Emeryville and um, went to school here. So my roots are really in Emeryville. And um, so being able to be a planner in Emeryville was Great thing. It's a great city. But what brings me here tonight is um, meant several things. One, um, back in 2005, we, um, February of 2005 actually, there were about 25 to 30 people who appeared before this board and requested um, them to look into a situation. And that situation was the fact that I had been taken off for a, for the fitness, for a psychological fitness for duty because I had filed a complaint against a Caucasian co-worker. And that, and the person started retaliating against me physically to the point where as I complained to the HR director, to my supervisor, Charles Bryant, no one did anything. No one I guess they thought it wasn't serious, so they let it continue, and it escalated. So at, one, at some point, as I continue, I continue to email, I began to notice that they weren't taking it seriously. So I went to Berkeley Police. They told me to file a complaint. I went to the, um, I called my supervisor out of courtesy, HR director out of courtesy, to let them know that I was going to be seeking help from outside. Courteous, being, being nice. Well, that was turned into a threat, and that being turned into a threat meant that some action had to be taken. So the next day, I went to the police department, filed a police report to stop the, har to stop the harassment, and um, upon my return to work on September 17th, I was called into the city manager's office and was given a letter. And the letter said that I was going for a psychological evaluation. Not knowing what it was for, I asked why. What did I do? Mr. Biddle was present, and Mr. Flores was, was present. <clears throat> Excuse me. Neither one of them would tell me. So I was escorted. Uh, I appeared with Erica Broyard, who's here tonight, and um, she's a witness to everything that had occurred. So I left. And, um, the after, no, there it is. I was told then to these, the the. Um, City attorney escorted me back to my desk, escorted me to and from my car at least three times, not only in front of the co-worker who I'd accused Pardon of me, discriminating. Uh, 
Uh, Pollard, uh, your five minutes is up. I was five minutes? I spent most of it trying to get the microphone to work. Anyone wants to sign in? And well, I, I would ask that we waive the five minutes tonight. Leslie's been here a very long time, and I, you know, as long as, as, long as you keep this in. I appreciate that, Dick. If you start getting up to 10 or 15, then we'll be hollering. Dang. Okay. I'll do, I'll do my best. Okay. Um, so anyway, um, after that, um, I was escorted back to my desk in and out of the building in front of <clears throat> not only the accused employee, but also in front of the public and in front of my coworkers. And I don't know how to explain what that felt like. I don't, I can't tell you when you dedicate 27 and a half years to a job and to be treated like that, what that, what that does to you. And then not only to be treated like that, to not know why you're being escorted out of the building, not know why you're going for an uh, evaluation, not knowing if it's a physical or psychological evaluation, and then appear before the doctor who doesn't know if it's a psychological or physical evaluation, and I don't find out till I leave. And then, and only then, did I know that I was being accused of making a threat. Then, and only then, two weeks later, was I sent to a psychologist who then determined that I was had a personality disorder after one, two and a half hour visit and one test in which I sat there all day from nine to five, being completing te one test and being interviewed for nothing, to have him label me with a personality disorder. That personality disorder was then used to terminate me because the city said, we can't accommodate you. I get letters telling me that Leslie, um, you got a serious medical condition after six weeks after seeing a psychiatrist. Oh, really? What is it? We can't tell you. For three months, I walked around not knowing that what it was. Then I get a letter of intent to terminate. And I'm not going to go into the details of what happened in between there because a lot of the things occurred. But then I get a, tent to, a letter to, of intent to terminate. And that's when we came before this city council and pleaded. People, there's people in this room that came that day and pleaded that the city council take a look at what was going on. For the city council to go back and investigate. For the city council to talk to the people who were taking this action against me and find out why. But not only should you have done that, all of you, most of you, know me. I've helped you. I've represented and helped you get elected. I've helped Ken get elected nor is certainly has requested, maybe hasn't been granted it, and I don't know if there's a bitterness there or not, but certainly um, she asked. And Ruth, and I want to say with Ruth, Ruth, you, can, you contacted me, and you asked me before we left the other building, I believe, Leslie, I want, you know, I'm running for office. Um, I heard about your situation, and I was excited. Hey, we got a council member that's excited about my situation. But then, when the, when the request came in from staff to change my job title and downgrade it, to make all these changes, Ruth wasn't there. Ruth was voting against it. Ruth never came to me. Ruth never asked. And that isn't what happened, Ruth. I was at your home. We worked hard together. And I, and I, and I say this because you all knew me. Dick knew me. Man, Dick and I walked the precincts. He heard me defend some of the things that was being said. And I think you had a little respect for me because you made sure that I maybe got on a board or something. I believe you had something to do with that. So you knew me. So when someone came to you and said, there's something wrong with her, the only one that I can stand here and say that stood up and said anything about it was Kim Bukowski. Why are you changing her job title? Well, this doesn't make any sense. Only Kim Bukowski. Why? He's interested in knowing. He knows what's going to happen. You keep messing with me, I'm going to have to do what? You file complaints. Because why? Because you're wrong. But he also knows me as an individual. He also knows the type of person I am. And he's the only one that was willing to stand up and say against this whole entire board, I don't think this is right. We're going down the wrong road. So in 2005, when you all heard that, I don't know how many of you went 
to, the, to manage, management and said, let's do something. But because you didn't, it forced me to get a, a lawyer. That's one another $1.3 million. It forced me to file a grievance. It forced me to do a whole bunch of other things I normally wouldn't have done because nobody cared. Nobody stepped up to the plate, supported Kim Bukowski, and looked into this matter, which sent the message to me that how many of you were in on it? I mean, you have to take a look back. There's only two things it can be. You're either naive, and I don't believe any of you are naive, or you wouldn't have been elected, or you're in on it. Or you just think management has a good reason because this is a problem employee, she's African American, she don't fit. But whatever the case might be, you were wrong for not looking into this because it's these taxpayers who's going to pay the cost. Not you, not you, not you, not you, and not you. So I wanted to make sure that you understand that coming to you before this board and saying to you, look, we got a problem here. They're about to fire me. Do something that somebody should have stepped up to the plate and did something. The other thing I really want to touch on, and I think this is extremely important because I know this city so well. Um, that's a good thing about having been raised here and been part of the political process and being a union steward and an officer is race discrimination. People don't want to hear that anymore. People race, race. That's all black people say is race, race, race. Well, you know what? I'm here to tell you right now. I said it. And I said it because I could back it up. Because I've been keeping records since 1990 when I became a subject of race discrimination and had to file a complaint. And it was only then that I started thinking, well, you know what? There's something wrong here. And a facilitator said, as a demographics change that you hired, as a demographics change, Emeryville will find the need to change with it. And you know what? I'm standing here today and telling you Emeryville is changing with it. And, Emory, and you all are making sure it happens. Because staff can't do anything without your approval. Or staff doesn't do it unless you've ordered it. But let me just give you a couple examples of race discrimination that I'm referring to. We have an African-American female who lost her sister. And as she, when she lost her sister, no flowers were sent to her. No card was passed around for her. Very emotional time. When, she, when her coworker lost her mother, the secretary had to pass around a, a card for her. And guess what? She got flowers. Now, another example, a gentleman's been here for six years, well-known, well-respected, even here tonight, hopefully. This person served in a position as manager, did everything for the city, applied for a job to be promoted, couldn't get a 15-minute interview, a 15-minute interview, but he was able and required or forced to sit on the panel and assess the people, the candidates that applied for the job. But he wasn't good enough to give the answers. Another example, I'm going to give you four of them. There's two more to go now, I've almost been done. One another example. Gentleman's been here 16 years, 16 at least. None of these have anything to do with me. We don't have time for that. But this gentleman here has been for 16 years at least, applied for a crew chief job. Now he's low key on this. Upset but low key. Not complaining a lot, but upset. He's been a crew chief before. He's done the work. Good, good worker. Someone else applies for the job, a Caucasian. Been here a year and a half. Never been a crew chief before. Never been maintenance before. This is his first time on the job. He's got his, getting his experience right here in Emeryville. Three of them goes down to the wire. Guess what? Guess who, get, guess who got the job? Guess who got the job? The Caucasian, right? Last example. There's a gentleman who worked in one of the departments who I know is not here tonight. Very ambitious, very professional, hard worker, wanted to be promoted to code enforcement. He couldn't be a code enforcement because we put those requirements on there where you can't be code enforcement unless you have a degree. 
but he went to another city where now he's a code and he's a code enforcement specialist and he don't have to have a degree but those requirements sometimes are able to keep some of the people who've been in the job a little longer no, they, they can't get the job well this person here applied for had a, went into a supervisor's office I'm with him as a steward and made a comment because Abraham harassed me at three grievances filed for race discrimination on you know the song and dance and he said um, you know you do, you're docking my pay and I'm I'm you know, you're gonna forget that one day because I'm gonna I'm gonna file a grievance I witnessed him saying he was gonna file a grievance the supervisor him said what'd you say I, I said you're gonna file, I'm gonna file a grievance supervisor waited three weeks and then he decided I'm gonna get you so what does he do? He ledges, he made a threat. He made a threat. So he was subjected to a three month investigation. He got fed up and guess what he did? He left. And I give these, there are so many examples that I plan, I'm, I'm actually preparing some, some documents, I actually wanted to have it for you tonight. You'd be overwhelmed or certainly the public should be because I can tell you, majority of these people could be down at Department of Fair Employment at EEOC and filing complaints. And they're not doing that. They're hoping that the city council will take step back and take a look at what is going on in this city and start to make a change, starting with management. Starting with management. Or maybe the change needs to start with city council. Because if it continues, something's got to be done. My last. And what I'm going to say about these issues, all these things, is that these people are deserving. They're not looking for a handout. This is not something that people are, are just feeling like, you owe me because I've been here for 15 years or 10 years. These people deserve this. I deserve to be more than a planning technician. I know that. I did the work. I surveyed every city. I knew I, needed, I deserved to be more than a planning technician. But I was willing to sacrifice that. I fought, but I sacrificed. And so are these people. But I think people are getting tired. And, and people like myself, who now think, Stuart, you all have freed me up, that I hope I can help so many people out here that want and need and deserve what they're not getting. And my last, my last, this is my last, last area, I believe it is my last area, is on the investigations. You have a staff here. You have a city attorney on board. You have a human resources director. And I read in a paper where it said, um, we have policies in place. We, 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 ha we have training. We have all this stuff that's, you know, our people are very well prepared. Then why in the heck am I standing in front of you making this speech? Why in the heck did the city put out almost $4.236 million dollars just on this case, not what happened to me before. Another million there almost. For what? How do you explain that to your people? How do you explain that to your constituents, to the citizens of Emeryville? How do you explain it? Why? There's a procedures. You're absolutely right. I agree. There's procedures. There's personnel rules and regs. There's harassment policies. There's violence in the workplace, something that they never used on me. They just escorted me out the door. I didn't have rights. But the city attorney was in those meetings. He was a part of them. He was part of the discussions. Where was the advice he was supposed to provide to staff that, look, we can't do this. They didn't even take notes when they took me off. <clears throat> they didn't, the, the chief called. The chief called the city manager and said, Leslie came down and filed a police report. That was supposed to have been the threat. At least that's what, Mr. Flores said, I said, I filed a police report. One ear and out the other. But Mr. Biddle was in them meetings, and he knew I filed a police report, and he knew it before I left this building. And he certainly knew it before I went to the doctor. The HR director knew it. The message you sent to that coworker who wasn't disciplined, who wasn't talked to, who was drawing pictures and posting them, you can't ask for anyone else to, to do something about 
a person who depicts African Americans with big lips and squiggly hair, and you take it and you post it up on the desk so the person that sits there can see it. And you don't do it once, you do it twice. But what does the city, <clears throat> what, does the, what does the city say? It wasn't offensive. Did you see the, they didn't see the pictures. All they know is two coworkers saw them. But it wasn't offensive. Ms. So Pollard, could you so, bring your comments to a conclusion, please? I'm getting there. So what is said to this coworker? is that it's okay, it's okay to do what you did. So she and anybody else, any employee of the city can go back and post those pictures up on that wall if they want to. You can post them all around the anywhere. There was no investigations. The city, the, the HR director never investigated anything. She just determined that I was lying, mischaracterizing the events, exaggerating. And I bring all this to your attention because this is serious. Investigations are serious. The law is not getting, is not going this way, it's going that way. It's going up. They are insisting that you protect people who complain. The accused, HR director said, I am protecting the accused. Not you, Leslie, the accused. And the city attorney supported it. So I'm going, to end on, I'm going to end on this note, but I'm, I'm not at all finished. And when I'm not finished, then that means I have to come back. <coughs> but nonetheless, I want to just let you know that in all of this, I'm hoping you, you take note, because it was so hard for me when I was terminated for two years. And I certainly didn't have a, I didn't get a job. I couldn't get a job because I had termination on my record. And I had to sink and swim the best way I could, and I did that. And I want to applaud Mr. Bukowski, because he made all of you look bad. He did. And, and that's a, a man when I have to say that anybody that, can, that is willing to stand up against his colleagues, knowing that he might not get that vote on that next project because he just over, you know, he crossed the line, should be applauded. Because he did so, and you should have all listened to him. So I hope to come back one day. Thank you. Hi, my name is Millie Cleveland. I'm the union field representative for the SEIU Emeryville chapter. I know Le uh, Leslie spoke a long time, but after uh, being out of work for two years and no pay, I think the city of Emeryville could give her her 15 minutes. Um, <laughs> Uh, what I want to say to the city and to the people that are uh, watching this television program is that when a city pays an ex or settles with an extraordinary amount of money, it's a red flag. It's a very serious red flag that something is going wrong in your city and you guys are the overseers for this city. Serious errors were made in the legal department. Serious errors were made by human resources. And uh, it, it's interesting, during the arbitration, I don't know if you know it, but you paid for a violence prevention expert that was flown up here from San Diego, paid by the city of Emeryville, who agreed with the union in the arbitration. Our union attorney literally walked him through the entire scenario, asking him, how do you feel about this step? How do you feel about that step? And your paid expert said, I wouldn't do it like that. No, that was wrong. That came from your paid expert. I don't know if that was shared for you. I encourage you to get the transcripts from the arbitration. If there's any obstacle, please contact me. I'll provide them for you. Okay, now. What's also very important is to let you know that these inequities are not just here in City Hall. We have a particular problem in the Child Development Center, which is another area of predominantly women of color who are seriously overworked, very underpaid. They are so understaffed over there that they are harassed just for taking a day off because they're sick. They're vulnerable to illnesses because little kids come in with runny noses and pink eye and diarrhea and all that kind of stuff. And they are most susceptible to illnesses and they don't have enough staff over there. 
The food service workers are oppressed. They do not have enough staff to cover for the children over there. And so the inequities in the uh, in this city are broader than just City Hall. We're going to have a serious problem correcting it if we don't correct the problems at the Child Development Center. And I say that now as we go into contract negotiations as our, ex our contract expires at the end of June, fixing the inequities in the Child Development Center is going to be a priority for the union. I want to make that very clear to not only the workers, but this is a very valuable asset that you have in the city. I mean, to have a child development center that has infants and toddlers, there are a lot of working mothers around here that consider that center very valuable. And, but you need to treat the workers that take care of those children as valuable as you do the potential taxes that you might get out of Pixar. Our people are human beings. They provide a valuable service. They need to be respected. They should be treated with dignity, and they deserve the benefits that go along with that. So thank you for your time. I need you to understand that the inequities are not just in City Hall, that we have problems, that Leslie has just begun to unfold. And I hope that there's some introspection on your part with the legal errors and the H and the Human Resource Department errors that led you to pay millions of dollars, somebody should need, you need to stop looking at the employees and look at the people that you hire in those positions, particularly management. <laughs> Ma'am, did you sign in over here? <coughs> uh, over, over to your right. <coughs> Is it possible to make a comment here? Or, uh... Could we allow the public to comment, Ken? My name is Brian Donnie. I live at 4333 Holden Street, and a uh, 25-year resident. So I have listened to what was just said here by Ms. Pollard, and um, it's, it's outrageous. And so regarding, so Mr. Flores, the city manager, is gone, so we can't say anything to him. But Mr. Biddle, the city attorney, still employed here by the city. And so regarding Mr. Biddle's culpability in this matter, I'd like to say, uh, uh, Biddy, you're doing a heck of a job. Now, I calculated the amount of money here. It's $4.6 million that, the, that the, the city of Emeryville is paying for this fiasco. And so I, I, on the way over here, I have a little calculator. It's, it's over $650 for every man, woman, and child in Emeryville. So I think of like all the, the civic projects that we need to do that, we, that we're now not going to be able to do. This is an outrage. And so I, I, I think the, the, the amount of in, in, ineptitude and incompetence by the management is just, it's just an outrage. And, and I don't even know. I, I'm just speechless, almost speechless about this. And I think it's time for Mr. Biddle to, uh, to step down, frankly. Is there any other public comment? Well, um, I think that everyone here Pardon agrees. Me, could you identify yourself, please? Um, Valerie Savage. I think that everyone here um, agrees that the issues um, here that people have addressed are um, very serious matters. And um, I'm just going to quickly ask um, if, any, if there's anyone here that um, has lost their job, been harassed, singled out, or um, falsely disciplined by the city to please stand. Thank you very much. Um, I hope that you guys take a good look at this because this is not nearly half of the people that have been affected in this manner by, um, by the city. And the public should, should be really just, just outraged. Um, over 30 people um, over the past few years have come before you to talk to you about the unfair treatment of employees in this city. 
I came with other taxpayers in 2005 to plead with you regarding these issues as well as the, um, the case, the issue with Leslie Pollard. And um, apparently um, you guys didn't look into it and didn't take it seriously because she turned out to be um, terminated. So, um, which of course you know that these were, um, these terms were found, um, found it to be unfounded. Um, and I would really like to know what you guys plan to do to stop, you know, this type of practices. It's, it's really just absurd. This is a small city, but you have such a big racial problem and such a big problem with discrimination. You know, it's, it's, it's really, it's really, it makes me very upset. You know, you put up traffic lights and you have um, these new cameras that are out to stop people so they can pay attention to the signs, but yet yeah, you've had signs for years and you have not stopped and you haven't paid attention. What is that saying? You know, I, and also the last time I was here, I witnessed um, how you guys responded to the alleged racial um, allegations of the Woodfin Hotel and um, what's going on with their employees. And yet, you can sit on your board and have all of this going on within your, um, your own city. There's a saying that says, um, how are you going to pull out the speck in somebody else's eye when you have a plank in your own. You guys have things that are happening in your own house. You need to do house cleaning in your own house. And I'm really wondering if, if with all of this going on in Emeryville, if you guys have reviewed any documents, if you guys have talked to anybody, um, because I'm just so outraged. I personally don't think that you guys are fit, with the exception of Kim Bukowski that Leslie um, has pointed out. And, um, you know, I'm hoping that you guys do something about this, that you set up a, um, a, some type of um, diversity um, investigation. I know myself and other taxpayers are going to um, hold you guys accountable that this needs to be investigated. And, and we'll make sure that this problem gets investigated, because um, this this is a this is a public um, problem, and you know it's time out for for backdoor politics. You guys are wasting taxpayers' money, and this is this is just senseless. And Leslie Pollard's issue is a prime example. And I personally think that you guys should just be ashamed of yourself. Um, if Bob Savage was here, or even if he wasn't, he'd probably be turning over in, in his grave if he knew what was going on. You know, he didn't stand for this kind of stuff in Emeryville. He stood for, he wanted this to be a place for all people, where they're comfortable, where they're happy, where it's a place they can enjoy to live and to work and to play, to shop. And, you know, he, he wanted this to be a place for all people. And you guys, many of you knew him very well. And it's, it's really sad because I know that if he was here today, this would not be happening. This would not be. Um, oh, excuse me. So I, I think that it's, it's definitely time for change in Emeryville. It's time to end these, the backdoor politics that take place in Emeryville. We live in a democratic society, and yet in the city of Emeryville, the voters do not go to the voting poll and elect a mayor, and it is 2007. I don't understand that. It's time, it's time for change in Emeryville. You know, and the taxpayers should be Pardon just be me, flabbergasted. Could you bring your comments to a close? I will bring my comments to a to a close. Thank you. It's time for change in in Emeryville. Um, I came to this city over 15 years ago. Many of you are still here. I think that you've gotten comfortable in your seats. You've gotten comfortable in your ways, and it's time for things to change here. And you know, it 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 scares me. To that, I'm thinking that you guys have Ms. gotten Savage, so comfortable. Your time's up. Thank you. Your time's Thank up, you. Ms. Savage. He's going to give me his time. Uh, uh, <laughs>
Thank you. As I was saying, I think that you guys have been on this board so long that you've gotten comfortable in, in your positions and um, that you no longer have regard for the employees and the um, citizens of this community. Many people, um, you guys, the city is just rebuilding and, and building up so, so many um, taxpayers in this community do not know what's going on. And it's time that they know what's going on. And I personally, along with other taxpayers, um, uh, am going to be a person to definitely fight for change in Emeryville. Good evening. I'm Alan Jackson. I am the uh, president of the Berkeley branch of the NAACP. And our organization, of course, is one of the oldest civil rights organization in America. Perhaps some of you think that our organization is dormant and inactive, but I came by tonight to let you know that we are very much alive and we're very active. And uh, we want to do things right and nice, but sometimes things get out of hand. We don't want that to happen, but if we have to bring folk in to dramatize or demonstrate our position, then we may have to do that. And I'm not coming to you, bringing to you any idle threats or anything of that nature. We have to deal with the fact that change is inevitable. And uh, sometimes we uh, think that we can suppress or stifle progress of any minority, African Americans in particular. But I think that we all should know that it's a new day and that uh, we're going to be very vigilant in trying to make sure that change occurs in a positive manner. And I trust that you all will use your prudence and to make these things happen so that we won't have to have, you know, uh, a little Emeryville that, that stands out as being a, uh, a city that's racist and a city that uh, uh, denies opportunities to all of its citizens and the community is around. And as I said, I'm from Berkeley, and uh, the Berkeley NAACP joins with the citizens of Emeryville because it's a small city, all right? So we're coalescing, and if necessary, we can go to Oakland and Richmond, and we can bring the troops in, but we want you to do what's right. God bless you. <clears throat> Is there any other public comment? Sir, did you sign in? Oh, that's right. I said, I said thank you. I Hi, it. my name is. No, you got it. My name is Ken Robinson. I am currently an employee in the Public Works Department. Um, most of you have over the years seen me out in the streets. I'm one of the guys that does the dirty work. Um, thank you. Um, I'm also one of the people that Leslie was talking about. Um, I started here roughly uh, 16, 17 years ago. I was uh, young at the time, uh, naive, learning new things. This was probably the best job that I ever received at that time. Um, I'd like to really thank the council and the management for the vision that they've had for the city because when I came in, the city literally was nothing but empty buildings and uh, I was told that they were on the fast track to develop into one of the, the major cities around here and be an a, a intricate part of this corridor. And I did not realize until growing up with the city the things that it has become. And it, it really is a beautiful city. Um, with that being said, 
amongst us African Americans, there's little secrets, little whispers. Um, we talk amongst ourselves about some of the unfair treatment that goes on here. Um, I'm kind of a quiet person by nature. Um, I'm not going to do the finger pointing. I, I'm not into that. Um, I'm, I'm more or less interested in resolution. Um, you know, I'm here today to support Leslie. Leslie has been a good friend of mine. She, uh, she has been in my corner ever since before I even became a permanent member. When I first started, it was a little different than most people. I started out as a temporary, which lasted about a year and a half. Um, and she was an intricate part of getting me on permanent. Um, I can remember the days when I went home to my parents and said, I, got, I finally got my chance. I finally received a, a chance to uh, you know, better myself. I've not only watched the city grow, but I've grown with the city. You know, I started in my mid to early 20s, and now I'm in my 40s. Um, when you grow with someone and you watch the things that have happened positive, you like to feel that you've been a part of that. I do feel a part of that. But sometimes I don't feel that the city has acknowledged it. Um, you get your data boys, you get your pats on the back, but when you apply for a promotional position, not once, twice, three times, but four times, and be denied, then you sometimes question whether or not, not so much yourself, but whether or not the city really wants you you know, you question whether or not those pats on the back were really meaning or were they false. Um, I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time up here. I just want you guys to know that, you know, I'm here. Uh, I had a, my supervisor during a uh, evaluation meeting he questioned whether or not um, maybe I felt this was the best place for me. Um, I'm here. I'm not going anywhere. I spent a long time in this city, and I watched it grow. And I continue, and I'm going to continue on being a part of it. Um, it's just about respect, really. It's about feeling appreciated not just as an Afro-American, but as a person. And I hope you guys really just think about some of the things that are said tonight. Um, you will see me again, and you definitely will see me on the streets. Those are my job. It's helped me. It's helped my family. I'm a very proud person, and um, I thank you for your time. Any other public comment? If not, we'll move on to the cons Are you going to give me a minute to speak after this? Or, uh? Well, you, you have a chance to speak down under 8B. Yeah, I know. Well, then the, everybody will be gone. So. Oh, all right. Uh, uh, just be a minute. Hi, how's everybody? Um, my name is Craig Chandler. I'm Information Systems Coordinator, City of Pleasant Hill. Former employee here. I worked here for six years. Um, I was the person Leslie mentioned that um, worked here for six years, applied for a manager's position, and um, didn't even get an interview. Um, it was real disappointing because I felt I held this uh, the information systems department here together for about three years without a lot of help. 
Um, so I was very disappointed when I didn't get an interview. Um, I'm at Pleasant Hill now. Um, I'm asked every day, you know, how do I like it there? Um, and I'm told every day that they really appreciate me being there. Um, of all the things I've done here, um, even looking around and looking at some of the stuff, even my hands on this podium, I hope put this in here. Um, wire up this mic, work on that equipment in there. Um, not getting an interview just told me how much I wasn't appreciated here. Um, just being here the last few months I was here just made my life miserable. Um, just having to come here every day, um, going through the interview process of interviewing people and, um, and asking them questions that I know I can answer and them not answering them. And then seeing, you know, them get a, you know, one of those persons get the job that I felt I've been doing for the last three years. Um, it's just real disappointing. So I'm not going to take up a whole lot of time. I'm happy now. Pleasure to go. Appreciate you. So um, I just um, one question here. Uh, nothing against any of the people who have had the opportunity, but I've seen this city bend over backwards to give people opportunities, um, you know, de making people temporary department heads, temporary managers. I was never given that opportunity. I went to the city manager. I went to my department head, never given that opportunity. Um, they brought in contractors, people from other cities, everything else, but um, but when you bring in a, you know, someone that's supposed to be a manager here for one day a week, can they really manage a, a department? Um, so who's really managing it? You know, things like that. Um, my job is closes on the 23rd. Uh, I'm very curious to see um, the hiring, how the hiring process goes for that job. And I, I, I plan to actually keep in touch and find out. So, all right. Is there any other public comment? Uh, Council Member Bukowski. <clears throat> I want to say I really want to thank Leslie for coming here and bringing these matters to our attention. It shows that she really cares about this city. She could go off with the money if she wanted, but that's not where she's at, and I know that. The other thing that I think is outrageous is that I asked for a copy of the transcript of this matter because I wanted to investigate it, and I was refused that document. I was asked to make a decision to give away millions of dollars, and I could not have the document necessary to, to find it out. I still can't get a copy of it. The city attorney has refused it. He asked the members of this council to deny me a copy of this document when I was 15 minutes late for a meeting. I didn't even have a chance to tell or talk to the members of the council about it, and they refused to put it on the agenda, so I can't even discuss it with my colleagues. That's the kind of treatment that I got. And I've been treated that way a long time ago, and Leslie and I were comparing notes on that. It's really an unfortunate day for the city here, but I hope we can change things, and I will work to change this process. I've, I've introduced an idea to change the grievance process so the council even has the opportunity to look at these matters before they go to binding arbitration. We at least deserve the opportunity to find out what the uh, risks are before we go forward to a binding matter in the courtroom. So that's all I have to say. Thank you. <laughs> Do I hear a motion? Uh, pardon me. Do I hear a motion on the consent calendar? Down once in a while. Yeah, I, I think we're going to. One of the things we got to find out is whether whether we can what we could scrub that with, because of most of it's going to go in the bay, and I realize that happens anyway. But I presume I, water. Yeah, is, but I'd like us water, to to water. get on that soon because it, that's something that's going to have to just be done every single week, and maybe more frequently than once it's a week. It's a very long railing. 
Yeah, I know it is. <laughs> you know, it's interesting because the old railing was flat, and they didn't like that that much, but they seem to like this angle thing, you know? It's, it's just uh, it's a, like an attractive nuisance. Maybe just put up a sign, no pigeons, and they'll go away. Yeah, right. Yeah, right. Anyway, can we get some feedback as to what, what we're going to do and how frequently we're going to do it? Bet, because it's just too it. nice of a new amenity to just l look like it does. Okay. Thanks. John. I attended the uh, Bay Area Council meeting a week or so ago in San Francisco, so it was a good meeting. I saw Ted Turner. Make his ridiculous remarks. About? About Asians. Uh, oh, I didn't hear. Oh. Didn't hear that. I'd okay. No other comments from anyone? This meeting is adjourned. Thank you, one and all. <laughs>